Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, actually, it's my pleasure uh, to be here to share with you this topic. Um, I asked Bruce, he said, your association was set up five, five months ago. And uh, when Ninja told me this is the first featured talk, I kind of very nervous, you know, uh, because this is my first time to give a talk in Hong Kong. Uh, yes, I gave a lot of talks in mainland China. It's in Chinese. <laughs> it's much, much easier for me. Um, but it's, it's great honor. I like to come here uh, to share the talk. Uh, the topic is 40 years of the national matriculation NGD test in China uh, about its impact and the implications. I'm from Chongqing University. It's located in southwest China. Uh, I also work as consultant to Cambridge Assessment English. So every year I will spend two or three months there. Uh, just now I mentioned, uh, because it's my first time to give a talk <coughs> in Hong Kong, so I had um, many rounds of communication with Linda about what should I talk about. Uh, and Linda, this is one of the emails. Uh, Linda sent to me and uh, said, oh, people might be interested in this and that. And she raised a few questions for me to, uh, to consider. Uh, with, with her help, I came up with uh, two topics, uh, a few topics, I should say, right? <laughs> and then in the end, we decided these two topics. Uh, I already gave the talk uh, this morning about the first one, China's Standards of English Language Ability. We call it CSE uh, for short. Um, uh, the next the topic, 40 years of the National Matriculation English Test, uh, because this year is the 40th year uh, since the restoration of the test. And the CSE is quite a new national policy. It was released just this year. Its English version was released two weeks ago. So, uh, as a warm up, activity, I would like you to look at this old photo and guess when it was taken and why. And welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah very welcome. And uh, guess why it was taken and uh, um, what did you see from this old photo? Could you see? Yes. Do you see anybody familiar? That's me. <laughs> That's me. Yes. Yes, that's a village school. That's where I studied, started my education. And this photo was taken 40 years ago. 1977, the year when Gaokao was restored. Because of that, my father was excited. He saw the hope for the, you know, with, my, with my mom. They saw the hope of us children. So my father get us all five kids together to take this photo. This is a photo, the first photo in my life. And the first photo with my siblings 40 years ago. I was 10 years old at that time. Um, I wish you could see more of the context then, cultural, social, educational, even political. If you look very carefully, you could see the cracks in the ore, it's a dangerous building. That's the only school building in my village school. And you could see some other kids, they were so curious, right? Because they didn't see camera in their lifetime, first time. And, and you might also notice, sorry, no smiles on our faces. See, just one shot 
you could see quite a lot of the you know, economy, of the education, of people's life. I can just use one word to describe the life then, poverty stricken. See, my youngest brother, he was wearing a coat, but I was wearing slippers. So you could see, and you could see my brother's toes. See, brother's toes there. Um, it's very hard for me to imagine life then, now. That's how we started 40 years ago. And also you, uh, you saw the color, you see the color, black, gray. That's the color then. Okay, so with this background or context, let's start the 40 years journey. Uh, in my talk, uh, there will be some key acronyms or terms. Gao Kao, in Chinese, uh, 高等入学考试, uh, that's college university entrance examinations. And the Gaoka English, that's English as one of the subjects in college entrance examinations. Uh, because before, before it got the official name, we called it Gaoka English. Then we got its official name first, Matriculation English Test, MET. Finally, the official name is National Matriculation English Test. So in my talk, I will use those terms. And this diagram shows the changes in and reforms of the NMET over the 40 years. In my talk, there will be two threads. One is about the NMET, the reforms, changes. The, the other one is about my personal journey as a Gaokao test taker, a test developer, researcher, and a parent of an MET test taker. So two threads. Uh, this, diagram, uh, this diagram shows the major events or major uh, reforms. It, Gaokao was restored in 1977, and in 1983, its weighting increased to 100 as a compulsory subject in Gaokao. That was the year I first took Gaokao. And then in 1989, um, Gaokao English got its official name, MET. It was standardized. It's the first time we had a test specification, and its first time guided writing was introduced into Gaokao English. In 1991, its official name changed to National Matriculation English Test. And then in 2000, Engl listening comprehension was introduced, first introduced to NMET. And in 2005, I was the first time I was invited to help design the MET in Chongqing. That's when I started to do research in an MET. Um, then in 2009, the vocabulary size for the MET was increased from 1500 to 3000. That's the year my son took his Gaokao. And the, then in 2016, um, the Ministry of Education introduced this reform twice a year uh, of Gaokao. And also one task type, read to write, was introduced into Gaokao English. This is a very brief introduction. Now let's, let's have a look at, you know, the test structure of 1978 Gaokao English. Could you see? 
What were assist? What was assist? What was assist then? Yeah, grammar, translation. So because then, grammar translation, that's the teaching approach, right? And uh, only two skills, translation and reading, were assist. And mainly at the sentence level, you could see sentence completion, sentence transfer, uh, Chinese English sentence translation. So basically at word and sentence level then. And in 1978, only one reading passage. Perhaps you couldn't see it quite clearly, but you could see such a short reading passage, 218 words, with five MC, multiple choice items, accounted for 20% out of 100. Could you imagine the stakes for any one test taker getting any one item wrong? For one item, five marks. In China, Gaokao was, is, then was, very competitive. So you can imagine that. And these are the four multiple choice items. Each item, five marks. So you could say then test design was not professional yeah. at all. Uh, in 1978, I took my first high stakes test. We call it Xiao Sen Chu. That's the entrance examinations for junior secondary school. Two subjects for us, Chinese and mathematics. No English. I had not even heard of English then. That's me. That's me. And then in uh, 1981, I took my second high stakes exams, uh, the entrance examinations for senior secondary school. For this whole class, class, only four girls succeeded in entering senior secondary school. These four girls, these four girls. Obviously, that's me, <laughs> always the shortest one. Uh, hello, there, welcome. <laughs> yeah, very welcome. Uh, so, um, these four girls succeeded in senior secondary school. At that time, we had no idea about bias, you know, um, test fairness. Um, among those four girls, one girl didn't go to the senior secondary school because her mom died and her father wanted her to get married early. So, And another girl, she dropped out uh, after just half a year's schooling uh, in, in uh, senior secondary school because uh, her parents wanted to build a house for her brother to get married. They couldn't afford her education, so she dropped. Uh, just this girl and me carried on with our senior um, secondary school education. And this diagram shows the increasing weighting of NMET in the first few years of uh, uh, Gaoka restoration um, from 1997-0 to 100% uh, 1983, 1983. That's the year, 1983, that's the year I first took uh, Gaokao. Uh, in my two-year senior secondary school uh, study, um, the first, my first 
English teacher. He is a teacher of Russian. He studied Russian at the university.、Uh, then he taught himself English, and he became our English teacher. He's a very good man. He's a very good man, but he's a victim of the ten-year turmoil. He got mental problems.、Um, I thought I learned nothing in the first year uh, in, in, uh, with my English.、Um, the second year, we had a new teacher who studied English for three years from a teacher's school.、Uh, teacher school that you know students they entered the teacher school after three years. Uh, junior secondary school study. Okay, he studied three years uh, uh, English and came to my school to be an English teacher. I remembered、uh, when he read like ninety forties. He, he looked at the number ninety、so、forty with S. He didn't know how to pronounce that, how to say that, how to say. But he studied to teach us. A, B, and C. So I started my English learning journey from the second year of my senior high school, senior secondary school. After one year's study, we graduated. At that time, not everyone got the chance to take Gaokao. We need to sit.、Um, The pre-examinations to compete for the rare opportunity to take Gaokao.、Um, I remember when I was sitting the pre-examination Gaokao English. the The test paper was so difficult, I couldn't do most of the items. But I saw the boy next to me. You know, he was writing all the time. I couldn't help, you know,、um, tears just flooding、uh, out of my eyes.、Uh, I thought I must fail, you know.、Um, but in the end, it turned out I succeeded. He failed. You know why? Can you figure out why? Because he didn't know the answer either. What he was writing was all Chinese pinyin. So he did much worse than I did, and I succeeded. So I got the opportunity to take my first Gaokao.、Uh, oh, of course, I failed.、Um, I I couldn't. I had forgotten the scores of all the other subjects in my first Gaokao, apart from English. I remembered my score、uh, of Gaokao English the first time. Forty-six out of one hundred. To you, it's so no. To me, it's a huge achievement. At that time, I was sixteen. I was young, was innocent. I thought, hmm, I had studied English for one year. I got forty-six. If I want to study for another year. What might be the score? <laughs> At that time, I said I, I didn't say ninety-two. I said eighty-six.、Mm, I said six. So I went to a Gaokao test preparation school for one more year. Very luckily, in that one year, we had a very qualified English teacher. He taught us one year. Um, in that test preparation school, used textbooks. He compiled. He compiled himself, and、um, I also got the chance to take my second Gaokao. I got exactly what I anticipated a year ago, a year before. I mean, eighty-six out of one hundred in that one year. So you could see teachers' quality. How important it was for 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 kids,、okay. and、um, 
at the second year. So let, let's let's look at my first year, uh, Gaokao English. This structure. Could you see back there? See what word? What was this? Word pronunciation, recognition. Error correction, word spelling, word matching paraphrase, sentence transfer. So, so you could say most of the items were at word level, sentence level, right? And reading is done there. These are some examples of the items. Um, that's when I took my second Gaokao. So, after my second um, Gaokao, because I applied to study English as a major uh, at the university, so I had to take uh, the speaking test. Uh, <laughs> I remember I was asked a couple of questions, uh, none of them I understood, uh, except the last one. I couldn't remember what's the question now, but I definitely remember my answer then because it was so simple. I said, um, I don't think I can. I don't think I can. And uh, to my big surprise, the examiner said, very good. <laughs> you know why? He, he praised me because many other candidates said, I think I can't. I think I can't, that's Chinglish. I don't think I can, that's, that's English. Because of this one answer, I was admitted to a teacher's college to study English. So you could see, at that time, um, the English education then, and how much we need qualified teachers. This, this table uh, compares the two years of Gaokao, the two years I took my Gaokao. If you look at the task types, item numbers, and the weighting, you could see, what could you see? See the task types, item number, item number and waiting. Even, you see, two years next to each other, you could see a lot of inconsistencies. Right? See, for example, look at this one. Sentence transfer, sentence completion, that's different. And the item number, so different. And the weighting is also different. They changed quite a lot, year by year. And we teachers and the test takers didn't know what it would be in the next Gaokao English. So inconsistency was a serious issue then. And then I was admitted to this Zigong Teachers College. The good teachers college, that's me. That's me. I was once young, very young. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I was studying in that teacher's college, we didn't have even one professor. We didn't have access to authentic materials. I didn't even have a tape recorder or a radio to listen to English. I studied very hard, mainly by reading simplified novels and textbooks. I was trained to be a school teacher, but three years later, I got the opportunity to take another high stakes test. If I had succeeded, I could become a university teacher. But I was told by a senior, she said, um, because the, that test is to, was to select university teachers 
So height would be one of the criteria. And obviously, I couldn't change that. But I did do cheating on the day when they measure my height. See, I did things like this. And the doctors, the doctors, see, when she measured me, oh, see, then I ran away. So she couldn't get me back to measure me again. But when I entered, when I succeeded in entering uh, Sichuan University of International Studies, I found that's a lot of the case. A lot of the case. Anyway, that's just uh, one, you know, um, thing. Then you could see um, the transparency. We didn't have that transparency then. Um, I was admitted. I passed that high stakes exam, written and uh, speaking exams and entered the Sichuan University of International Studies for my bachelor's degree. We succeed, when we succeeded in that exam, we were assigned to different colleges and universities. So I was assigned back to the teacher's college as an assistant teacher. And in my lifetime, the first time we had native speaker of English to teach us speaking and writing. On my graduation, I mean, after I got my bachelor's degree, I was assigned first to a remote uh, middle school to teach English. In that middle school, before I went there, no kid succeeded in entering any college or university, mainly because of the poor quality of English teachers. So I was there teaching one year, and one year later, the headmaster in that school came to my college to give me 12,000 RMB. Then, at that time for me, one month, my monthly income is 88 RMB. So it's like all of a sudden I became rich for a short while because the class I taught, many kids from that class succeeded in entering teacher school, you know, um, uh, uh, three years college or even uh, four year uh, college uh, universities. Now, many of those students become civil servants, city mayors, um, professors even. Um, I'm very proud of my first year teaching experience uh, then. That's in, um, from 1988 to 1989. But at that time, as a high uh, senior secondary school teacher, I didn't know the reforms of those uh, aspects in the um, Gaokao English. In 1989, Gaokao English got its official name, Matriculation English Test. And the first time we had test spef specifications and um, Gaokao English was standardized we used many multiple choice questions to assess um, students, test takers' language use. And the guided writing was first introduced into Gaokao English. This table shows the test structure of 1989 uh, MET. You could say, um, see part one, English knowledge, part two, um, Language, uh, English language use, uh, usage. Uh, we had some new uh, task types like closed test, reading comprehension, and guided writing. So many of those task types are retained up to today. So since then, it's standardized. Standardized. And at the first time, reading accounted for 40 
percent out of 100. And this shows the um, first time you know, guided writing was introduced into uh, Gaokao English. You could see if you couldn't read Chinese, but uh, you could figure out th th these are the directions. So the directions were in much in detail, right? Um, here it says, write the announcement in English in 70 to 100 words. Please don't translate the direction from uh, Chinese into English directly. So you could see um, at the beginning for this guided writing, the statistics were told uh, in detail what to do. And then in 1991, the official name, National Matriculation English Test, and the uh, total score for Gaokao English or uh, NMAT increased from 100 marks to 150. And essay revision, a lot of task type essay revision was introduced. In 1991, that's the year my son was born. And um, after I had taught in that teacher's college for four years, I left my son behind to my parents. Uh, I moved on to study for my master's degree at Sichuan University. A year later, my husband joined me for his master's degree. And uh, we had struggled quite a lot for our study. And then I was employed by Chongqing University as an assistant teacher in 1996. That's when we first moved to Chongqing. Uh, that's the first time I uh, attended uh, a conference, an in international conference, it's in Peking University, a language teaching in 1997. That's the first time I attended an uh, international conference. And um, because I worked very hard, and I also did a lot, uh, started to do research. In three years' time, I was promoted to be an associate professor. Uh, during that time, in 2000, 2000, in the year 2000, listening comprehension was first introduced into N the NMET. So you could say it's very late we added this listening comprehension until 2012, very recent. Um, during those years, there is some instability, instability of this task type um, in Gaokao English. That's why this morning, remember well, this morning when we talk about those teachers, they assessed themselves, they found listening is their weakest skill, right? Um, that's passionate reason. And uh, this shows the directions of listening comprehension in 2003. Uh, the total score, 30 marks out of 150. Um, the test takers had two minutes to transfer their answer to the answer sheet from the test paper. Um, two sections altogether for the listening comprehension. Uh, part one, five short dialogues read once. Part two, five longer dialogues uh, or monologues and read twice and read twice. I had worked in Chongqing University for, for five years. Then I moved on to, uh, to once again, once again left my son behind to my parents, you know. So at this time, uh, I went to Shanghai Jiao Tong University to study for my PhD. That's my PhD. Uh, and uh, when I left my son's uh, little boy, when I graduated, he became a young man. So you could see the huge change uh, in four years' time. Uh, that's me in Shanghai, first time to attend a conference on language assessment. 
and my PhD was later published. Okay, um, I was involved in an Emily Chongqing test paper development for three years. Um, this table shows the uh, test structure of an Emily Chongqing. Uh, the policy started in uh, 2004. The Ministry of Education had this policy. The uh, provinces, cities could decide, design their own NMT test papers. So Chongqing was one of the, I think, at uh, the most 19 provinces to develop their own uh, test papers. So um, this table shows uh, those three years, the um, test components and task types, item numbers, and the weighting of NMT Chongqing. When I first, when I was first involved in developing an MIT in Chongqing, I realized how much research we needed in this field. So in, in, since uh, 2006, my team and I, you know, have been carrying, conducting research in Gaokao English. Um, and we published a book called, um, entitled, A Synchronic and Diachronic Study of the NMET Test Papers. And we also had a project funded by the National, uh, Philosophy, National Foundation of Philosophy uh, and Social Science. And um, I would like you to do one more activity. Uh, could you see back there uh, this um, statement? This is a senior a school graduate um, Hong Kong U statement. Uh, could you please take a minute to look at the statement and uh, assess this student language proficiency and guess uh, what you know, what might be the score for his Gaokao English out of 150? You can compare with your students from mainland China, right? if you know their performance and also their, uh, you know, Gaokao score in English. Okay, please. High 120s, low 130s. Uh, you, mean, you mean? That, that, that student got that score in his Gaokao. Uh, out of 150? Yes. Uh, what might be the score? 129, 130, 130 uh, 132. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Any other guess? Very exact. <laughs> so, so you could say uh, we, we can um, make the assessment. Um, this statement was written by my son. Uh, at that time, uh, right after his cow cow, because at that time he's targeting Tsinghua Peking University, uh, then after his AMET, I said, what if you couldn't get into Tsinghua or Peking University? Um, the other choice is to study in Hong Kong. So he wrote this uh, statement after his AMET. And he got, in his Gaokao English, 136. So exactly, 136. Um, but he got, um, the total score is very high. Um, his total score uh, was, was very high. Uh, ranked 15, I think 15, among 180,000 students in Chongqing in 2009. And he uh, went to Tsinghua University to study architecture. And this picture was at, his, at their uh, commencement. I was selected as the um, representative of 
parent on behalf of 1,000, um, on behalf of the parents of 1,000 uh, graduates to give a, a speech at their commencement to thank the, the school and the teachers um, and also to congratulate uh, the, um, the kids. And this picture shows the first day of my son's Gao Kao. Um, parents were waiting outside the school for the kids to come out uh, after the first subject exam. Okay, let's see. Let's review the 40 years of the NMET, 1978, 1988, uh, 2018. You could say first, the skills were assessed. In 1978, translation reading. In 1998, reading, writing. And in 2018, listening, reading, um, knowledge, use, and writing. And all through these years, one skill was not assessed. Speaking. So now you know why students from mainland China, they cannot speak. Uh, of course, maybe some. I, I mean, uh, I mean, in China, there there are huge gaps between areas. Even in one city like mine, Chongqing, you could see huge gaps between schools. So, but as a whole, students in mainland China, they are not that good at speaking. Um, one of the reasons, because speaking is not assessed. Uh, for those students who apply to study languages, they will take speaking test. That's after the NMET, written NMET. And in some provinces and cities like Guangdong, Guangdong province, they have speaking and listening test together, see, uh, computer-based, computer-based. So it's different from promise to promise. But for the national test paper, no speaking uh, is included. Do you still remember my four siblings? Do you still remember my father, you know, then he saw the hope for us five children? These, these are uh, four, five of us uh, with my parents. With my, you could see the huge change. Four of us, five children, took Gao Kao and changed our lives. Um, for, for my brother, eldest brother, twice Gao Kao. For me, twice Gao Kao. Uh, my sister, three times Gao Kao. And um, there's one story even. Uh, you could see how, how, how huge the impact uh, could be for, for, for children, um, for, for students. Um, my, my eldest brother, he was studying in university when I graduated the first time I took Gao Kao. I remember the night before the Gao Kao, he gave me a, a, a white, you know, tap, what do you call it? Um, a white um, medicine? Tablet? Yeah, yeah. White tablet. Yeah. And he said, you, you, you take that, then you can fall asleep right away, right away. And the next year, he did the same thing to me and uh, to my sister. After my sister, you know, passed her Gao Kao, he told us it's vitamin C. <laughs> vitamin C. So see, people tried every mean, you know, to, um, to help you to get uh, prepared for, for the exam. And... Um, Luckily, three of my brothers, uh, my three brothers, sorry, my three brothers, now they are entrepreneurs. They are entrepreneurs. And my sister, a uh, civil servant, a government official, and, and I'm, I, I'm the only one doing academic, um, become a professor. 
and uh, you could see the uh, what what what's a huge difference do you see from these two pictures they are um, you know my siblings and uh, children they all smile see <laughs> they're all yeah they're all smiling and also you see very colorful with their clothes <laughs> right um, that picture was taken 10 years ago so almost at our same age so you could see the huge difference between the two generations because just because of I think mainly education um, helped us uh, to have a huge and different um, life and not just for my generation but for our next gen uh, generation and maybe generations to come and uh, this is my big family getting together last spring festival so one year ago a year ago okay <laughs> to prepare this talk I did many test papers uh, Gaokao test papers again not just to see my English performance unfortunately I found I didn't make much progress over the years in my Gaokao performance um, but what really worry about worries me what really worries about me could you please see the my performance here I did those test papers in one week's time okay I did it just once I didn't uh, spend much time you know, to rethink and uh, you know just carry on doing okay um, all those are um, mainly objective items not subjective uh, no listening because I didn't have the tape um, I, I, I mean the um, for the listening I didn't have that um, uh, material uh, for, for listening and I didn't write the conversations, uh, essays, part, but all, most of them are subject items. And my performance, you could see the huge range, right? What do you think caused those, you know, uh, fluctuations? Well, I guess it's the uh, difficulty level. Yeah. Okay, say so first, difficulty levels. What else? Sometimes a uh, familiarity of the task types. Okay. And um, some other reasons. I found some test papers, you see, it's just boring. I just didn't want to do, you know. Um, and some passage, you know, the, the topics are very interesting. So I, I just would like to. Um, read um, with Iglis, with Iglis. Particularly, I like to draw your attention to this, you know, that's NMA Zhejiang. Zhejiang was one of the two provinces in the city, uh, just Zhejiang and Shanghai. Now, uh, they, they started 2016, this uh, pilot, um, twice a year, Gaokao, English. For example, Zhejiang, you see, uh, one year, two times, the student, the test takers, uh, can sit twice a Gao Kao, and they choose one one time the higher school for their entrance exam. Um, see my performance. Then I start to think about perhaps some of you already new you see just last month this province um, with the Gaokao they got huge uh, problems it's after Gaokao after the rating and uh, some some test takers and parents uh, you know asked why 
uh, they performed so poor in some uh, tasks, and then they, they changed the weighting of some tasks. And the more, you know, test takers' parents, you know, got into, um, I should say, rage, rage, uh, then they, they uh, canceled that policy, and some government officials, you know, were, um, got into uh, trouble, got in trouble. So you could say, um, with these examples, you could say we still face a lot of issues with the NMAT. In my opinion, the major issues are about standards, transparency, accountability, fairness, uh, and so on. Um, I think we are still um, we we still have a lot of issues to um, to to deal with for young for generations to come. Uh, these are my two granddaughters. Um, they are my you know energy uh, to to work uh, for the future. Here are the major references, and. Uh, I wish I answered some of uh, Ninda's question I showed on the first two uh, slides. Uh, more questions are welcome. Thank you very much. That's my major talk. Thank you. Questions? Thank you very much for your talk. Um, I, I should perhaps know this, but is there any attempt to standardize uh, Gaokao across the provinces? You are explaining to us how some things are allowed to be a little bit different, but is there any overall body that national, I know it would be quite difficult, but is any attempt made to standardize nationally? Thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, exactly. Um, the policy for individual provinces to develop their own MMAT started in 2000, mainly 2004, lasted 10 years. Now, um, we started to use nationwide, you know, the same test papers for, for the whole country. Only a few provinces and cities like uh, Zhejiang, Shanghai, Beijing, Tianjin, those four. Uh, provinces and uh, provinces and uh, cities, they are still developing their own NMET. Um, for the rest, we use the same uh, test papers uh, designed by the uh, Ministry of Education. Uh, NIA, I should say, uh, the National Examination Authority, uh, the organization. I, I remember to call the NIA. <laughs> yes. Um, and in China, we have the national curriculum uh, for high school education, um, one national uh, curriculum, but um, they allow different textbooks. And um, because of this, um, un imbalanced, imbalanced, a development of education in different provinces. So they allowed for 10 years to, um, for individual provinces to develop their own test papers. In recent years, the tendency is to use the same uh, test papers again. I call that kind of standardized, okay, with the same criteria, you know, same uh, standards. Yes, thanks for the question. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for your talk. Uh, so, uh, do you see in the near future that the speech <coughs> component will be included in the Gaokao exam? In the near future. <laughs> Thank you very much for the question. I don't think I can answer that um, because uh, I didn't have the right <laughs> to decide for that. But um, I predict we will. Uh, because now Chinese government uh, strongly recommend the use of modern technology. Uh, and also because some provinces already started 
to use computer-based uh, speaking test. So um, for the near future, I don't know how long it will take, but definitely um, the government and also you know people at various levels they, they, they see the importance of including speaking test in Gaokao English. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, how is the computer computer based speaking test done? Um, honestly, I think it's not interactive. You know, with computer based test, it's always that's always the issue, the problem, right? Uh, but um, some task types is like you you repeat the sentence, and you were given some you know a prompt, and you started to present individually, and also you got the chance to talk with in pairs, or things like that. I think it's semi interactive. Um, and it, to a certain extent, the test taker's speaking ability could be assessed, but not like face-to-face -face communication. Uh, of course, it depends on how, could, how we would define the construct of speaking test, right? Generally, we think, speaker test should be interactive, right? Uh, um, authentic and uh, reciprocal. reciprocal. So, yes, that's up to this stage. Okay. Thank you very much for that question. Any more questions? No. Well, can I take this opportunity just to thank Professor Guru very much for a very interesting Thank you. Thank you.